for a showdown with the Justice Department. Congressman Darrell Issa accusing the DOJ and the FBI of slow walking document requests from Congress until after the midterm elections. He says they have a strategy. Here's what he, the former chairman of the House Oversight Committee told me yesterday on Sunday Morning Futures. Do you think you are getting honest answers from the FBI and the DOJ? No, I don't. I believe they're lying through their teeth. Mm. Uh, look, if you want to tell the truth, you, what you do is the same thing you do in front of a federal judge, which, by the way, is another branch, just as Congress is, and you allow a full in-camera review. Uh, you know, I'm not there at the negotiating table. This is uh, now Trey Gowdy's watch. But when I was there, we would most often say, if you say it's too voluminous and you say it's going to take too long, great. We'll sit side by side with your people. We'll search. We'll look. And then we'll narrow down things we don't need. But to do that, we need to see them completely unredacted. If they want to get to the truth, that's what they do. Joining us right now to talk more about that, Fox News senior judicial analyst, Judge Andrew Napolitano. Judge, good to see you. Good morning. He makes a good point. Look, if they slow walk this all the way up to November, uh, and then they get lucky, whereas they get a majority in the House, they're going to change all those committee chairmen. We're not going to hear a word about this investigation. Well, they should be careful what they ask for, because the Democrats running the House are, are likely to be aggressive against the president, maybe not against the, against the Justice Department. Yeah, good point. But there are three categories that the Justice Department believes it can hold back, those which the law allows, those which interfere with the internal operation of an ongoing criminal investigation, and are you ready for this one? Those which would embarrass the Justice Department or the FBI. Uh, Obviously, the third category is not a lawful category, but it's what they do, wow. because under the J. Edgar Hoover so years, there you go. they got away with it so over and over and over they can just hide behind now, it's going to embarrass us. Well, it's interesting. Congressman Issa mentioned something that I have not heard from Congressman Gowdy or Congressman Nunes, and no, no criticism to them. He's basically said, look, why this impasse? Let's serve the subpoena, they don't reply, hold them in contempt, and get the contempt citation before a court. And then the judge will say, okay, send the documents to me. And I used to do this, and I will review them, and I'll decide which the Congress gets and which That's the Congress good. doesn't get. That's good. And then the impasse is over. This has been going on and on and on. This week will be the anniversary of the appointment of Bob M uh, Mueller. So this has been going on for a year. With respect to the FISA stuff, it's been going on for more than a year. It shouldn't be going on like this. It's debilitating to the government. It's damaging to the DOJ. You have a very prominent congressman saying to the DOJ, you're lying through your teeth. You have the number two person in the DOJ saying, this is extortion. Well, well this shouldn't be happening in the government. No, the government is here to protect our rights, protect our property, and serve us, you not to fight with each other. You would think they're all on the same side, that they want justice, that they want honesty and independence. That's not the case, they're, though. There, the there is the separation of powers issue, which is why there's that second category I told you about. Congress cannot interfere in an ongoing criminal investigation. And candidly, some of what Congress is looking for is still in the midst of an ongoing investigation mm -hmm. because politicians can't keep their mouths shut. And they may see something that they'll release, which will send a witness fleeing or a defendant hiding. Mm -hmm. Why don't they, they go the route that you mentioned with the subpoena and have a judge review the I like documents? this. Yeah. I like this idea. You know, for some reason, they don't want to do that. Even when the Republican House of Representatives held Democratic Attorney General Eric Holder in contempt for failure to turn over fast and furious documents, they never went the one step further and took the contempt to a court. So it's basically just a piece of paper. If they had taken it to a court and it was a judgment of contempt, I guarantee you he would have coughed up those documents because the judgment of contempt would have interfered with his ability to practice law after he left the Justice Department. What's the reluctance about? I don't know what the reluctance is, and it makes you wonder. Forget They're me. hiding something. Do they really want these documents, or are they doing this to gin up their base? Because if they really want the documents, they have the tools with which to get them. So it's more important to say you won't give them to me than it is to receive them themselves? The say again? It's more important to claim we're not getting the documents than it is to actually have the documents? Politically, it might yeah. be it might be beneficial to them. Yeah, but let's be honest. They, they're asking for 1.2 million documents. 
and they've only gotten 9,000. So give me a break. It's they, been a they, year. They, yeah. No question but that the DOJ is slow walking. Politically, this. I don't think that this would be something that would motivate them simply because the, the situation with the documents, what they haven't gotten, the top secret intelligence source that the Justice Department is hiding from who the Gaudi Washington Post Nunez, seems they, to know who it is. Not right, yeah. but there was a leak to the Washington Post. It, it, the average voter gets lost in the weeds. Completely. Yeah. We well, understand the importance of it. Well, the that you have an abuse of power at, well, you know, the, at the very Post, top of our in law enforcement. The, the Washington Post just, knew that General Flynn and, and Ambassador Kislyak had been taped before General Flynn, a former spy, knew that he, uh, that's that he a had felony. been taped. Yes, absolutely. It's not yeah. a felony for the Post to know about it and to reveal it's it. It's a felony for whoever gave it to the Post. Right. We say exactly. two words, Pentagon Papers. That's the, that's, that's the case. Again, yeah. you, that's right. They that's the case. By the way, that's the case that Michael Ellsworth. Avenatti is going to rely on for revealing Michael Cohen's documents. Right. He's going to claim that he was acting as a member of the of the media mm. at the time he revealed that stuff. We'll see where it goes. Let's talk national security. I, I was really taken aback with former Vice President Dick Cheney's comments uh, about enhanced interrogation practices used on terrorism suspects after September 11th. Listen to this. I've been very vocal about it. I believed in it. I was heavily involved in getting it set up. Uh, and um, getting the opinion out of the Justice Department on how far we could go. I'm not one of those people who calls it torture. An awful lot of people do, but uh, it wasn't. It was uh, set up in a way that what we did was, in fact, uh, consistent with our fundamental statutes and, and agreements that were in place, and, uh, and it worked. I think uh, what we did uh, helped ultimately produce the intelligence we needed to be able to get uh, bin Laden. And uh, so I supported it wholeheartedly. Look, his, his main point, Judge, is we lost 3,000 people on September 11th. Uh, and it's not like we we're waterboarding everybody. It was three people, and the one who was waterboarded the most was the mastermind of 9-11. Except that all the former directors of the CIA during that time period, including General David Petraeus, and including the director nominee, Gina Haspel, say that torture doesn't work. Torture is absolutely against the law. What he authorized being done is now criminal to do. And it's also against three treaties as to which the United States is a party now and was a party at the but time. But she did say in the written information that she gave to the committee, she admitted that the program was a mistake, but she did say in written answers that the program produced valuable intelligence. So that's another way of saying that well, then it did not, then Osama she was not bin Laden is what. Yeah. Then she was not truthful under oath to Senator Feinstein when she said torture doesn't work. She said it three times. So it's clear that waterboarding is illegal today. It was not illegal at the time he was talking, in fairness to the vice president, former vice president, it was not illegal at the time he said right. he was uh, encouraging it and causing it to happen. It is illegal today. Well, it, she, you can't lie if it did indeed work and get information out he of it. He said it worked. Right. He said it worked. Dick she Cheney said it said didn't it. work. Yeah. Petraeus said it didn't work. He Panetta said he would said do it, it again. Didn't work. Brennan said it didn't work. He says he would do it again. Yeah, he sure but, You does. know, it's, it's an age-old conflict. This, this is not anything, uh, anything new. Right. Uh, it's just that now we have statutes to address it, and the statutes are very clear. Rob O'Neill, one of the SEAL team members who took down Osama bin Laden, said we would not have been on that mission if not for the interrogation program that was that's at right. work then. Mm -hmm. That's right, and that's what Dick Cheney was saying. Right. We got valuable information, the, and she re reiterated it in the hearing. The important well, then what's point the is sense that of having a statute if we're not going to obey it, if it doesn't apply in tough times. The statute was written to, to keep our behavior moral in bad times and in good, whether the immoral behavior works or not. Mm. If she was lying, she doesn't deserve to be to run the CIA. If she was telling the truth, she's going to have to explain uh, how she said it doesn't work. Judge, thank you. You're welcome. Andrew Napolitano there. We'll